Hello again! Last time I showed you in a very short video the basic principles to use the command blocks and scoreboard system to store binary values independent from players being online. Of course with the downside that you can only store binary values and not integers, but anyway, the video was very short and I guess many of you who watched it didn't quite get what I did there, so in this video I'll explain everything to you in detail. To do that I'll use a little tool called NPT Explorer. You can see two world saves in here. The one is scoreboard variables, that's the one I showed you in my last video, the one you can download there. And you can see scoreboard test world, that's the one I'm playing right now and the one where I will show you the stuff I do. In there we can find the folder data, that's the important one. And it's currently only filled with villagers.dat, not important for us. What we need is scoreboard.dat and there is no such file yet because we haven't used the scoreboard system in this world. Let's change that by creating a new objective. Scoreboard objectives add, then we give it a name, uh, first a type, dummy, so I don't accidentally change it when I make mistakes, and yeah, let's give it a screen name or display name, capital F. Now create it a new objective. And when you look in here, you can see we have now a file called scoreboard point. And in there we have three entries. One is for the objectives we create. One contains the actual values assigned for each player for each objective. And one create, uh, contains all the teams created. Those two entries are currently empty because we have to assign any values and created new teams. But we created new objectives, so there's one entry. And that one consists out of the name. First, the display name, in this case capital F, otherwise it would be just the same name as name, and uh, the criteria name, the type of objective dummy. So now since we create an objective, we can use scoreboard objectives list. This will just go through the entries in the objective entry in scoreboard.dat and give out everything that's in there. So at the moment we have only one single objective first and that's the only one uh, that will get outputted. Now let's do the following. Scoreboard players set, that means we want to set the value for a certain objective for a specific player, in this case for me, and for the objective first, and we set it to 1. Now created a value for me, for the objective first, and if we update now, we'll see player scores has now one entry, that's because I have a value. Again, three entries in this single position, the actual score for the objective and which player has this score. For every single objective, for every single score, for every single player, there will be such a single entry in player scores. So, Similar to objectives, I can use now scoreboard players list and will give out every single name it finds in this player scores entry. And currently the only name in there is my name, Wubi, so it will only give out this. Also I can use my name in behind the score players list command. This will only search for my name and give out every single entry that's connected to me. So in this case, again, only one objective assigned, only one point set, so this is the only way uh, value it finds, but it finds it. Now let's use this command, players reset, not remove, reset, Ruby. And what it does is, it completely removes me from the scoreboard system. Now I update again, and you can see there's no entry for me anymore player scores is completely empty. And when I use uh, this command now, it will give out an error because there is no player called Wubi and it can't give out what's not in there. Similar if I just use players list, there's also an error because there are no values stored in player scores so it can't output anything. That's an error. Now something else. 
we give ourselves a command block. Uh, then we need a comparator and a button and to make it more clear a redstone lamp. Simple setup. We have a comparator behind the command block facing outwards into a redstone lamp and to activate the command block we use a button on the side. By the way, I know the frame rates are low, that's because I make two recordings at once here. Sorry for that. Now, we enter in this command block the same command I used before. This one, which gives out an error because there's no intro for me, the list command. And the interesting part is, command blocks and comparators interact. When you execute a command in a command block and the command successfully works, you will get a redstone output from the comparator. And if the command doesn't work, for some reason, if there's an error, the comparator will give no output. And that's what we use. When I press this button, I will give it will get no output here because, um, well, the command gave an error. You just see it here. There's no entry for me, so no output. Now, when I assign myself a value again, first uh, one again, that means I have now a value stored in command blocks, uh, stored in the scoreboard system. Right, let's update. There it is. Ah, wrong command. So here, now I'm in the system and if I press this button, I will give an output. Because the command gets executed successfully without an error. And by the way, even if it should normally output a list of names, the A command block is the one executing the command, so we don't see anything of that. Doesn't disturb anything. And if we make a scoreboard players reset v, so we remove ourselves from the scoreboard again. The command gives not an error, oh. and that means if we activate this command block again, we'll get no output. And that's the way we store binary values. We can now choose, uh, just use two more command blocks. One to delete the value, to reset ourselves from the scoreboard system. And the other one to enter ourselves in the system by setting a value. By the way, it's uh, often easier to write the comments in the chat, the commands, because then you can use autocomplete and stuff and then just copy them into the command blocks. Just a small hint. So at the moment there's no value set, no output. I can activate this command block, score set, and I can activate this command block and get an output, and I can reset myself again from the command system, from the scoreboard system, and I will get no output. That's the whole secret. But of course, the nice part here is that it doesn't actually need an actual player for that to work. Since the scoreboard does nothing more than just saving the name, the objective and the value, we can use anything. And we use the na same name here. anything. So no output because there is currently no such player called anything. There's actually no player at all but that doesn't matter. Now we activate this command to set the score for the player anything to 1 for the objective first. You can see it gets entered in here because it doesn't check for the player actually existing. It just enters him in the system. And therefore the list command in here will just go through the entries and look if there's any player called anything in there. And there is one, so it gives an output. And if we reset the system, it will remove the name again from it. And this command block will get no output anymore. And we're finished.
of course instead of anything uh, my last video I used things like flex or bits but um, yeah that's everything you need and of course just to complete the video there's an alternative to using objectives and players you can just use teams if we look in here you can see that uh, I've currently no objectives no player scores stored and no teams so completely fresh let's start by creating a team scoreboard teams then we add a new team let's call it value because we store the value in form of teams so for each single value we create a new team and value now we update in here you can see that uh, we have a team created with all its attributes but there's no player in here so a command like scoreboard teams list and then the name for our team value will give a false output an error because there are no players assigned can you already see where this is going instead of teams add we now use teams join on the team and then we just um, give anything in there just like the actual values we set to the imaginary uh, players before we just let random players join the team so uh, by the way in here you can use real player names or you can just use um, fake player names it doesn't matter so I could use something like A I could also use Wubi I could use anything that doesn't matter I will just use uh, something here now the players joined up that again you can see one player is in here something if we now use the list command for value we'll give a positive output because there is a value stored in players there is an actual player so we get to output something and now we can just use uh, scoreboard scoreboard sorry no players teams of course and um, we can use something like leave now or we could use just empty that's the preferable one because we don't need to remember which names are stored in there and we make sure that every single name is removed if there are several names in there and we have no entries in here again that means, of course, if we now use this command, teams list, the name, we get an error. And let me just build this up. Finish that up. The system is basically the same as the previous one. And here we have scoreboard teams list, and then the name for the team we want to analyze. In this case, the team called value. That's the name for our Boolean variable, for the binary variable we uh, want to have to use then in this command block we have scoreboard teams join then here the name again for the team value in my case and then something in the back that can be anything real player or fake player as long as the system assumes it might be a 16 player it, everything is okay but be careful um, it can of course interfere with real players because every player can only exist in one team at the moment so if your player if you assign a real player in this team and the player actually joins your map and you want to assign him to another team um, that won't work okay so preferably use something that's not a real player name and in here we have scoreboard teams empty value again the name for the team want to change and that's all three commands for the team based storage system we create the player or we let him join the team we get an output we remove every player from the team and we get no output very simple thanks for watching and see you next time